There has been a whole plethora of pretty awful guns in Call of Duty Zombies over the years. With the most notable ones coming in Black Ops 2 with the SMR, you've got the War Machine, the Olympia, the Ballistic Knife. I'd even throw the Jet Gun into that conversation as well. However, Black Ops 2 isn't the only Call of Duty Zombies game that has its fair share of stinky guns. Black Ops 3 also has not as many, I will admit, but it does also have quite a few pretty god-awful guns for Call of Duty Zombies. And today, I am going to be using one of those guns, being the Faro, or the Faro. Wait, how do you say this thing's name again? You know what? I don't really know. Faro, Faro, however you say it, it's a four-burst SMG, and it is god-awful. <laughs> I'm fairly- I don't think I ever saw a single human being run this thing in multiplayer, even though I didn't play much of that game in multiplayer, because let's be honest, kind of sucked. Kind of sucked. I'm going to say it. Kind of sucked. But we're not here to talk about MP. We're here to talk about zombies. <laughs> that's probably that's probably going to annoy some people. But the Faro. The Faro, just, it's, it's, it's not a good gun. Like I said, it's a four-burst SMG. Firstly, it's a burst fire gun. No one who, who likes burst fire. Actually, no, I, now I say that the dredge is also a burst fire gun, and I do like that thing. But who likes burst fire SMGs? I mean, like who? Like actually, I am asking, like genuinely who? Now, I knew using the Faro SMG was going to be a challenge in itself, so I booted up Ascension. Now, <laughs> now I will admit. I didn't realize the furrow wasn't actually a war buy on Ascension. Thinking, you know, in my brain, you know, I thought it was, because I know it's a war buy on quite a few of the base maps on this game, Shadows of Evil, the Azendrak, Zeds of Onoshima, and I also know it's on quite a lot of the walls in a lot of the Chronicles maps, Kino de Totem, all of the World at War maps. So in my head, my naive head, I was like, it's probably on Ascension. Yeah, it's just not. It's just not. It's, it's really just not. However, however, it is in the box, and I do take it down here on round six on Ascension, and I I don't know if that gun in the box is a Vespa or a Faro, and I'm not gonna lie, I think it might have been a Vespa, could have been the Faro, both kind of look the same to me, gun racism, you know what I'm saying, but like, I don't know, it just, it, yeah, I don't know which one that was, but we take it down, and then I decided, you know what, it's not on the wall on Ascension, so that means I can't get ammo reliably on Ascension, anyway, so I switch maps, and I switch maps to Zed to Monoshima. <laughs> Now, I know there's going to be some people being like, Satch, what are you doing? Why is that to bonus shimmy? You've got to deal with thrashes. you got to deal with spiders. you got to deal with spiders leaving their webs everywhere. It's a tight map. It's not very easy to train on. It's pretty difficult. Look, all right, I like... ZNS. I like Zedzabo Nishima. I know it gets a lot of shit from a lot of other zombie YouTubers, but I like it, okay? I hated it when it came out in 2016, but I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love it today, and I do just really enjoy playing this map. So I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna use a gun that I hate, and let's be honest, everyone hates, I'm gonna use it on a map that I actually enjoy playing, so Zedzabo it is. Plus... Doing this on Zetsubo also adds just an extra layer of a challenge on top of the other challenge. Like, doing it on Kino, sure, alright, the Pharaoh is bad, it does make things harder, but, like, it's Kino. It's just, it's a square. You run around in a circle on the stage and you're fine. Especially when you put dead wire in this thing and you can just go forever. So I kind of thought, with Zetsubo, it adds, like, an extra layer of challenge, like I said. It's a difficult map to navigate and I just thought, you know what, this could be, this could be fun. And it surprisingly was very fun. So with my newly acquired Pharaoh, I finally started making my way through the rounds, albeit a little slower than I was anticipating. As the Pharaoh doesn't exactly kill things very quickly and it doesn't also have a lot of bullets. Like I said earlier, it's a four burst gun and you have 200 bullets in total. And let me tell you, you burn through these bullets so quickly. And considering Zedzbo is a little bit larger than most maps, having to run all the way across the map just to buy ammo, like literally every two minutes, not fun. Really not fun. Now, I could have used gobble gums. I could have used the cash bag. I could have used the alchemical one, which is where, like, every 10 points you get, you get a bullet back. I can't remember the full name to it. I'm sorry. I could have used those gobble gums, but quite frankly, I don't really like using gobble gums with these types of challenges, even though I don't really consider those two gobble gums specifically, like, that, like, insane, that crazy. I still kind of consider using gobble gums in general cheating, so I don't really do them, although I'm not going to lie, that might change a little later on in the video, but you'll have to just wait and see for that. 
<laughs> By round 10, I'd been going for maybe 20 minutes and I'd only just gotten all four of my parks. Like things were going that slowly. I was taking so long because I just had to run from point A to point B to buy ammo, back to point A to do what doing what I was earlier, and then running back to point B because I've run out of ammo again, back to point A where I was doing earlier. And it was just it was a headache. It was such a headache. But I very quickly got myself into a pretty nice groove and by the beginning of round 14 I had the Pharaoh Packer Punch. And not only did I get it Packer Punched, I also got Deadwire first time. Like literally unheard of. And I know someone's gonna be like, ooh, AAT's Deadwire, that's cheating. Shut up. <laughs> All right. The Pharaoh isn't exactly like a world beater. Just let, let me have something, okay? Also, can I just say, Whispering Regurgitator, what a name. Like, what a name. One of the best Pack-A-Punch names I've seen in Black Ops 3. Whoever named this gun, give yourself a pat on the back. Y you get a clap. Bravo. And the next few rounds were pretty smooth sailing. I managed to get myself the free pack bottle from completing my second challenge. And this, and this is going to play a bit of a pivotal part into the rest of this game. I decided to go and buy stamina up, and I'm going back to that same old conversation. I forget things when it comes to zombies. There's a lot of content there, there's a lot of things to remember, and my brain is like a colander, and I forget things, okay? <laughs> And on this map, there is a specific boss fight. Boss fight with a spider. So, I got my KT4 built, and I went over to bottle said spider. Only to realize, the Pharaoh doesn't exactly uh, pack much of a punch when you're fighting a, like a 15 foot tall spider that will absolutely annihilate you if given the chance. And I put all 300 plus bullets into this thing's face, as well as like 30 rounds of the KT4. Didn't die. Literally just, it didn't die. I had no bullets, no way of killing this goddamn monster of a spider. Just running around trying to keep myself alive for as long as possible. But then, the most clutch of clutch max ammos from just a random spider gets me the ammo I need. And I put like literally seven bullets into this thing's face and it dies and we take out the spider. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Satch. Why, 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 why do, why do the spider boss fight on round 26 of all rounds and not having any, per, uh, and not having any free perk spaces? Well, that's because I thought Widow's Wine was like a free perk no matter what. It went into your inventory no matter how many perks you had. I was very wrong. <laughs> I was just trying to exit this tunnel, realizing there's going to be a full wave of zombies waiting for me at the exit. I thought, that's fine. I've got dead wire in my fire. I've got a full mag of ammo. I, I'll be fine with that. What I wasn't fine with, the fact that I got baited and I didn't actually get Widow's Wine. I would have got Widow's Wine if I didn't buy Stamina Up, but I didn't do that. I did buy Stamina Up and I got trapped and I went down and then I died literally like two seconds later. So yay! But that isn't where this story ends. Oh no, because that would be too easy. You see, the massacre's part of my brain won today, and I decided to run it back. Now, this run was a little bit shaky, I won't lie. Uh, I wasn't recording all of it, but I did take it down on round 20, which was quite frustrating, as I was trying to do one of my challenges. Took it down, and I thought, you know what, it's fine. Some, sometimes the best runs require a little bit of early failure. And I thought that was starting to prove true, as we beat round 26, and then it wasn't until round 28 where i could have just simply bought ammo for the fire i could have but i didn't you see because i saw a max ammo drop and i also saw a bunch of zombies get fried by dead wire and i thought to myself i could make that i can go for that so i'm gonna do that and i tunnel vision the max ammo i got a trap that i went down <laughs> but that was fine because i recovered i got all my perks back and i went again that wasn't until literally round 29 when i got stuck in between a zombie and a rock managed to escape only to then have a spider quite literally bite my ankles and i take another down and unfortunately this time there was no recovery and i take another down literally two seconds later literally three downs within a single round that is, that is just how quickly things can fall apart in Call of Duty Zombies.